On last week's programme, Gillingham suffered a setback to their promotion hopes as Wrexham snatched a point at Priestfield. The meticulous planning of manager Tony Pulis now had to be perfect. Gillingham slipped to eighth, they had just two games left to push themselves back into the playoff places. The first at Plymouth was heading for a draw and the end of the Jill's dream, but a goal by Paul Smith in injury time set the football club on their way to the most dramatic day in their history. One game left, one win needed. It's early evening after the late, late win at Plymouth. Well, three points in the bag and um, let's Here get Here we home. go. See you later. Chilling a Airborne. They <laughs> <laughs> don't like us much down here. They certainly don't like us much there. Everyone's in good spirits for the journey back to Gillingham. Tony Pulis can afford a smile after a tiring week. At least he can travel home in style, courtesy of Chairman Paul Scally's private plane. He needs to put his feet up. Tomorrow he takes on the marathon. Paul's done well. He's uh, going to fly us back to, to Gillingham with his uh, Motley crew. Um, and then I'll have a bite to eat at Dave's, uh, Dave Boniface's place and have an early night. And um, I've got to get up early in the morning then to, to do the marathon. Nervous person? Uh, very nervous. But I'll get, I'll get through it now. You know, it's a terrific result. It would have been very, very difficult if, uh, to motivate myself. I really got beaten and, and not being in the shake-up. But uh, you know, with the results going the way they've gone, you know, that'll hopefully help me through. After enduring 90 nerve-wracking minutes against Plymouth, Tony now faces a test of a different kind. He and commercial manager Mike Sullivan are running for charity. I'm just cold. <laughs> London Marathon number 14, no, London Marathon number 15, all right, and we've also done another 15 New York as well. <laughs> the pressure on Tony Pulis over the next six days will be immense. The marathon might just take his mind off football. You see Tony? To finish under four hours was um, very good. I, like I say, I've never done one before, so I didn't know what time I'd get. Um, I've been a bit uh, fluey as well, and um, that was a concern. Um, but I got through it, uh, and, and yeah, I was, was pleased. I was very, very pleased Sunday afterwards, after it all finished, when you sit back and realise that you have done one, it's an achievement and everything else. So um, that was nice, but I won't be doing one next year or the year after or the year after. It'll be, again, when I get in my 50s, if I get the urge to really hurt myself again, then uh, I'll pick a marathon to do. It's the day before the final match against Wigan at Priestfield. You can't get the other ball, but your touch is always back where the ball comes from. And play. Play. So touch it back in, good little turn. Now go and find the other ball. Drop it off, go and find the other ball. There's a familiar face around. Ify Anura was always a popular player before he joined Swindon in March. His unexpected appearance has given the team a big boost on the eve of the match. Just having him in there has lifted the place. And um, I've said to him later on, uh, or later on this morning, that um, it would be lovely to see him if we did get in the playoffs. Pop him maybe one day next week and train with us. You pay too much for him, Steve. Fucking kiss that bud. I wish I'd never gone. If he is back, if he is back. The players are beginning to focus on the most important match in the football club's existence. The game against Wigan is less than 24 hours away.
We shouldn't be in the position that, that we're in um, and they shouldn't be in the position that they're in. You know, they're mid-table going nowhere. Um, and we're in with a, a shout. With what we've got um, and what we've had to work with and the resources that we've had, um, like I say, it'll just be a remarkable achievement tomorrow. Do you think the football club good afternoon? All right. No, the okay. seats are sold right. out for tomorrow's game. We've only got Terrace in now and you just need to play on the day. We've been inundated with phone calls from people that are still asking for seating area, which we can't oblige. So I think uh, the terraces are going to be pretty packed tomorrow, and we're just recommending that people get here as early as possible. Turn stars are going to open at one o'clock, and we're suggesting that they need to be in the ground by at least two because it's just going to be a full house. The big day has arrived. Two years ago, these fans packed Priestfield to see their team promoted from the third division. They didn't expect such progress so soon. Chillingham have never played first division football. What was once a dream is on the verge of becoming reality. Only Wigan stand in the way of a place in the playoffs. A long season, many miles, too many miles. Last week was bad enough, this week's even worse. I'm from Australia and come to watch Dealing in Play, so yeah, it'll be good. Did you sleep last night? Uh, I didn't sleep very well. My wife was out at the Dillingham Hen Night, so um, God knows what was going on there last night. But I've heard some amazing stories, but uh, no, I did. I slept quite well, but it's a nervy time, obviously, and tensions are high, but just want to get it underway now, really. Bethany. Yeah, she's overwhelmed a bit. She's overwhelmed. Are we shaking hands? Well, we're going to shake hands, Bethany. No, I don't blame you neither. Be wary of strange men. That's your shirt, yeah? Has all the players signed it? <laughs> Was you frightened of any of them? You can get more in sign it. They frightened me as well. I just saying to John about the referee, Lynch. Mm. Our biggest defeat away from home, Kev. He sends a player off, we write a report about him. The last game of the season, most important game that we get. We've got him. We've got him. to get the result today, we need you behind the team. Thanks from myself, thanks from Tony and the players. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thanks for all your support. Let's get behind the boys today because all the noise you're going to give them, we're going to win it. taken 10 months and 45 games to get here, but nothing can prepare Tony Pulis for the 90 minutes ahead. Is running out. Wigan, with nothing to play for, haven't read the script. Lady Luck smiled on Tony and his team against Plymouth. Twice in a week is asking a lot.
The draw is not enough. Gillingham haven't made it. The supporters know in their hearts a draw is not enough. The results from elsewhere confirm it. I came in at half time and a few of the lads had told me that, um, you know, the results, and at the time the results were, were okay, they were fine. Um, but you can't rely on other people to do you favours in this game. Um, you've got to do it yourself. And it would have been smashing if Brentford had done well at Rovers and uh, South End might have helped us out. But at the end of the day, we had to beat Wigan. Um, the one that's come off the post late on, you know, you need that to go in, Jeff. And if, if that goes in, that's a terrific achievement. Gillingham came so close. In the end, they had enough points, but not enough goals. The team that no one fancied almost, almost upset the odds. Only a few hours have passed since the final whistle blew on Gillingham's promotion dream, but the players deserve their party. The time for reflection is later. If you'd said that um, three seasons ago, that at this time of the year we'd be disappointed because we didn't get into the playoffs that could have got us into the first division, a lot of you would have probably laughed and said that's not possible, but it has been shown to be possible, and I think to, together as a team, um, we've all come through it. We've had some disappointing times this season. Um, we've had some difficult times this season. But we'll get stronger, uh, we'll get better, and rest assured that everyone, myself, Tony, the players, um, whilst tonight is a, today is a setback, we'll come over this, and next season we'll be stronger, we'll be better, and I promise you, we'll give you more things to be excited about. It's been three years since I've been at the football club, and the football club has pushed on you know, it's remarkable the achievements we've made. Um, you know, the, the, the playing side, the, the quality of players that we've got at the football club, um, the training ground, um, even the ground, the stand, the, the brand new stand, which is a, uh, a credit to Paul and the people who have put it together. But the, <laughs> but the one thing I will say, and I'll be saying it to him when we have our little break, is that you can have the best stand in the world and you can have the best ground in the world. If you ain't got the players, then the supporters won't come out to support you. If there were differences of opinion on how the football club should be run, everyone agreed on midfielder Paul Smith as player of the season. The club need to move forward off the pitch if they're to build on the progress made last season. Right, okay. Chairman Paul Scally is wasting no time, but he knows it won't be easy. While the big clubs are getting bigger, the likes of Gillingham will always face a struggle to survive. I have to say that it's been the most difficult season for me out of the three seasons uh, off the field, and I've battled continuously with our cash flow. Um, and I found it very difficult at times this season. I found it quite, um, I've been quite isolated as a chairman. Um, where I felt that because of the pressures I've been under, I haven't necessarily um, given the team and the manager the support that I've given him in previous years. Um, and that's something I, I need to get right because I feel it as much as probably they feel it. Um, and that was difficult for me and it's something I don't intend to let happen again this season. Who's next after you should be? Around the corner matters on the pitch are being decided. The players are waiting to find out which of them has a future. I think there probably will be one or two players leaving. Um, I think there's a possibility Addy may be going. Uh, and there's a possibility that Jimmy could be going. Because we've had one particular offer for both players, uh, from different clubs, um, that... Uh, a very good value, uh, very good offers for the club, 
and insofar as the players are concerned, it will further and better their careers enormously. For those players that have been rewarded with new contracts, it's time to raid the chairman's drinks cabinet. At a club like Gillingham, you've got a wheel and deal. You know, I've got to, I've got to um, uh, take on board that the football club um, is in a position where we can't keep all of our best players. We're not top first division or Premier League. So there's got to be some wheeling and dealing and everybody has its price. You know, for us to, to buy Addy 10 months ago for 250,000 and, and now to sell him for, you know, we've received or we are going to receive 1.2 million for Ad and more money if he plays games in international, uh, gets an international cap and goals. So uh, for us to get that is a terrific deal for the football club. Jimmy was a bonus. Jimmy only really came on board after Christmas and has, has excelled and, and the more we played him, the better he got. And it was no surprise that the big clubs would come and get Jimmy because they, they are out there looking for young talent. 17-year-old Jimmy Corbett started the season in the youth team. He's joined big spending Blackburn in the Premiership. Have you seen our team? It was a disappointment at the end of the season and, and to be fair, even now it's still a, it's looking back and seeing that we've just missed out on goal difference, really, or goal scored. Um, and it did hurt, and I did feel low. Um, it's not just the supporters and the players and everybody else. I think you take the majority of the weight on your shoulders. Um, and it, it has been, the last two or three weeks has been difficult. But the club has got, got potential to, to get into the first division. And we haven't realised that potential. We've got very close. Um, and I'm ready, I'm just starting to come round a little bit now where I'm ready, you know, for the fight again. To start, you know, roll your sleeves up and get going. Um, I've, I've been on the phone the last couple of days to players, um, trying to get things sorted for next season, so I can feel that adrenaline coming back and that enthusiasm coming back. It's a long season and, and it's very difficult at times, and a, emotionally it gets to you as well. And like I say, if we'd have been mid-table, nothing, play, playing for nothing, it wouldn't have been as bad, but to have missed out just on goals um, it was a massive disappointment, especially when I think that um, we were good enough to get in there. Ashton Gate is the new home of a Gillingham hero. Last season's top scorer and fans' favourite, Adi Akinbai, has joined newly promoted Bristol City in the first division. The offer of £1.2 million was too good to turn down, it might take Addy a little while to settle into his new surroundings, but if his debut is anything to go by, not that long. The two-all draw with Oxford saw him make a promising start. How Gillingham will miss his pace, his power, and most of all, his goals. While Addy played his part in Bristol City's solid start to the season, Gillingham opened with a 1-0 defeat at home to Walsall after a summer of change at Priestfield.
As for the future, well, if the Hessenthaler family have anything to do with it, Chillingham is in safe hands. Four-year-old Jacob won't remember much about season 97-98, but perhaps one day his dad will tell him what a dramatic year it was in the life of the football club.